of a special week at Snow College. It's Entrepreneurship Week. You've probably seen a few people around campus wearing these shirts to celebrate Entrepreneurship Week. We've also had several activities going on, and I just wanted to mention to you that tomorrow uh, at Convocation, we'll be hearing from five students at Snow College that have entered the Opportunity Ca uh, Quest competition. So we want to encourage everybody who, uh, who is in this class, if you can, tomorrow, go sit in on Convocation. Those five people just found out or are shortly finding out that they are going to sit in front of all their peers tomorrow and give a little pitch about their business idea. And so we want to encourage everybody to join in on that. Uh, business club. Any, any other activities I should be mentioning about Entrepreneurship Week? Does that cover those? Okay. So I want to share with you one other thing that's being launched at the college as part of this initiative. So this week, the president of the college signed a pledge to entrepreneurship as part of uh, an effort that many college presidents around the country have made to encourage entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship at Snow College is a mindset, not a major. None of you have a major in entrepreneurship, but all of you, regardless of your major, can have a, a, an entrepreneurial mindset. And so we believe that uh, anyone can be entrepreneurs. And so we're launching something that's going to be called Launch Lunch uh, after the first of the new year. But rather than waiting until then, we're going to have Launch Meetup. And it's starting next week. So next week on Tuesday, all of you who are innovators with great ideas and you think you'd like to figure out how do I actually make this idea a successful business, what I need you to do is meet us at the Launch Meetup doesn't cost anything. There'll be other people just like you that have ideas. There'll be some resources. We'll be talking. It'll be fairly casual. I'm going to have you watch just a little video for a second to promote that. All right, so that's 3.30. It's here just around the corner in room 102. So if you go into the library, there's kind of like a little fireplace just straight in as you walk in. Sometimes it's lit. It's to your left. There's one conference room on that main floor, and that's where we're going to be. So come join us at 3.30 next Tuesday. I'll send a reminder out. Uh, speaking of reminders, if you haven't completed your 12 modules and you're enrolled for two credit hours, scroll down on the home page, get down here, get into those. Hopefully you know how to find them by now, but you need to get those done in the next few days, actually. Now it's going to be my privilege to introduce a couple of very special speakers that have agreed to come and share their story of entrepreneurship with us today. Uh, we have Lanita Thompson here, and she's been busy over the last 25 years working to build a successful business and raise a strong family. Pressed Petals began in 1989, growing and, pressed, growing and pressing flowers for gifts and souvenirs. And over the years, this business has survived many things, including, being, including burning to the ground, a merger and acquisition, changing product lines and trends, as well as having to work with her awesome husband. Lenita is the mother of seven children and six grandchildren so far. They're what's most important in her life. Lenita and her husband, Chet. Maybe you can have you raise your hand, Chet, since I th understand Lenita is the one you're sending up here, right? They reside in Richfield, Utah. Their daughter, Lindy Royal, Royal Royale, 
Royal is the founder and co-owner of Little Poppy Company. She is the mother of three-year-old twins and married to Cameron Royal, who is currently in his fourth year of medical school. Lindy graduated from SUU in biology and thought it would be easier marrying a doctor than taking all the classes herself. So congratulations on making that decision. Little Poppy Company began in November of 2015, so it's a relatively new company and is an online subscription business that is experiencing great success. They provide hair accessories, bows, for little girls. The business has grown rapidly with over 10,000 monthly subscribers receiving three bows each month. As Minnie says on the Disney Channel, there's no business like bow business. Disney, or <laughs> Disney, entrepreneurship is a mindset not a major. All of you can be entrepreneurs. I want you to listen to their stories and hear how they did it and realize it's really not very far out of reach. And what are you waiting for? Go ahead and launch your ideas. So we're going to with that welcome Lanita Thompson. Can you hear me? Is that working? Doesn't sound like it's working. Thank you for that introduction and um, I have to tell you though, I just realized I didn't, Chet's talked about Alan a lot, but I just realized I taught him Sunday school. When I was 25 years old, I was his course 17 Sunday school teacher. So it's crazy when I think about that. I'm getting, I'm getting really old, in fact. Um, there's several in our town of Richville. One's a doctor, I taught him Sunday school. And anyway, it just ages me, but it's pretty awesome to see them and see what a great job they're doing. And what a great opportunity for all of you for that launch next Tuesday. You need to take advantage of that. I wish we had something like that when we began because we, we didn't and we just kind of went into it blindly. But I um, have to share with you really quick, like I was tricked into coming here. I thought I was going to be talking to about 10 to 15 students at Snow College South in Richfield. Had no clue that this is what I was getting myself into about, until about a week ago. So um, this is kind of scary and I'll tell you who tricked me and it was my husband and when Alan said awesome, her awesome husband, it's kind of a joke because there should have been another word in there instead of awesome because I haven't been very happy with him. But I am, that all being said, I am. This is exciting and I enjoy talking about our business and I love our business and I love um, being self-employed. It has a lot of great advantages to it. But um, I got nervous last night. I got online and I looked, um, I pulled up the website and looked at some of your other speakers over the last few weeks. and. I really started to panic because you have really been lucky to have some of the guest speakers that have spoke to you and I just felt like I am not um, adequate enough to do this, to teach you anything after looking at the others that have, um, have uh, been here in the weekly entrepreneurship um, lectures. And so there was only one thing, I woke up this morning and I thought, okay, there's only one thing that comforted me, whoops, it was that to know that after hearing me and our story, I think any one of you can see if she can do it, if her and her husband can do it, anybody can do it. And so, um, so hopefully it will help you realize that uh, anybody, including you, can start a business and become an entrepreneur. Um, I want to start off in the very beginning. Um, my husband and I have only been married three or four years, and we, um, we were really like financially strapped. We needed um, to find a solution to um, some extra income. And we had recently moved to Arizona, Mesa, Arizona. And we um, had heard of a company that needed pressed flowers. And so we reached out to this company and said, we're living in the Southwest and um, we would like to grow some flowers for you. And they never got back with us. And we, knew it couldn't be that hard to grow flowers. And so we started trying to find companies that's, that needed pressed flowers. And when I say pressed flowers, um, they're real flowers that you pick um, and you put them in a press and you just press them. And um, so we literally um, started trying to find companies. Now, this was in the olden days, 1988, 89, when there was no internet. And so we had to go to a local library in Mesa, Arizona and um, start researching in Yellow Pages and different you know, options to try to find companies that used pressed flowers. Um, anyway, we ended up finding a few. In fact, there were three. One was in Colorado and they used theirs in souvenir kind of uh, um, sun catcher type stained glass products. They were glass products. Um, another one, they, they put them in greeting cards, and then we found a third one in Europe, in London, that um, used them in, in floral pictures. 
So we found three accounts and we started selling to them. And it grew really, really fast. I mean, they really needed a, a ton of flowers. And so, so we were really lucky to um, start doing it. But then we started feeling a little vulnerable and started getting nervous about only having three accounts. You lose one account, you're in trouble because your livelihood is, you know, it's not, um, you just didn't have, you know, you just didn't have the job security. So we decided that we would start to develop products using the pressed flowers and selling them to companies. So we came up with um, a bookmark. And um, we wanted it clear. We looked and saw the success of the companies that we were selling to. And they were selling, you know, $10, $15 items in glass. And it was clear glass. And we felt like, how, you know, what can we do? We'll come up with something that's around $1.50 and, um, and try to sell these. And so we started um, developing the bookmark at our kitchen table. And, um, and it immediately took off. Um, we had great success right off the bat, and so we, we just continued to do that. Um, we continued to sell a little bit of um, our pressed flowers, but most of our flowers were being used in our own products. We eventually um, came up with, um, oh, and just to give you an idea, when you look at this bookmark, um, over the 25 years that we have been selling this, we've never let it go. We've gone from this to scrapbooking to home decor that you see here. But we never stopped selling this because it just always did so well. Can I drink your water? Sorry, my mouth is so dry, and so I should have. Thank you. Um, but over the years, we've probably sold over, I know we've sold over a million of these bookmarks. So it just tells you that you can come up with one little tiny idea, $1.50 at a time, <laughs> and you can sell a lot of them. But, Excuse me. So we started with this, and then we added magnets and sun couchers and floral pictures, and we just kind of continued to grow that over 10 years. Um, because we didn't have the internet, we didn't have social media like our lucky children do to, um, to market products, we had to go to trade shows. And I'm not sure, most of you are probably familiar with a trade show and what it is, but we would go to gift and um, souvenir trade shows and set up a booth, um, take, you know, like right now, we probably take 200 of these things and put them all over, you know, a huge booth. And um, while you're at this trade show, customers, mom and pop buyers and big box buyers like Target, you know, Michaels, um, just trying to think, Bed Bath & Beyond, they walk through. And there's thousands and thousands of booths at these trade shows. And they come through and they order your product and you ship them at a later time. Well, we did this for 10 years. We went to shows in California, New York, um, uh, Dallas, Atlanta, we went all over every six months, there, there are major trade shows. And so we sold our products that way and built a business up. And um, we're very um, happy with the size it was. I mean, you always want to grow and want to get bigger. But we were at a show in 2001, May of 2001 in New York. And kind of the buzz at the show was scrapbooking. And we had several people come up to us and say, your stickers, because we had done a pressed flower sticker also, and then we sold just the, the loose flowers. They said, your products would do great in scrapbooking. Um, so we started to go to scrapbooking shows. And sure enough, it, was, uh, it, it, it took off. It was, a, it was really a, an exciting time. And 2006, 2007, I think, was when the scrapbooking, maybe 2005, it was like, it was booming. Um, and so we were really excited to get in the scrapbooking show, but Chet decided that um, he wanted to, you know, maybe try to venture out and not just do shows. He wanted to actually go visit some of these bigger businesses that were selling scrapbooking items, and Michael's was probably the biggest. So he went into, um, he flew to Dallas, and there was a thing called a vendor day. And I'm not sure if very many companies do this anymore, but these big, huge businesses used to have vendor days and you could just show up and wait in line and you know they would call you up and then you would have your five ten minutes to meet with the buyer and um, he went to this met with a buyer at Michaels and immediately they also loved the idea of the pressed flowers and they ordered it for all thousand stores and all of a sudden we were going oh no you know what do we do and <laughs> we were lucky enough we had found a source for flowers in China and um, and so we started ordering our flowers, still producing some in the United States, but then also ordering them in China. And it was a lifesaver because when Michael's ordered these, we literally needed hundreds of thousands of flowers. And, um, and that wasn't an easy task, you know, growing acres of flowers and pressing. And we'd been doing it for several years, but to keep up with the demand, 
we were really lucky to find um, the sourcing in China. And we did look for sourcing in the United States first, but there, there wasn't any. So we, um, we started to buy our flowers there, which was a great, great blessing because um, the first week of September of 2001, um, we, our business burned to the ground completely. We lost everything, including flowers. Now, if we would have been counting on flowers that we had, you know, uh, or that, I guess what the thing I'm trying to say is that with flowers, you had to grow them. It takes six to eight months to grow them, and then you harvest them, and you, for two months, you're harvesting flowers and trying to get as many as you can. And so this is September, and our growing season was over, and it was just, we were really lucky that we had found this sourcing in China um, to keep us in business. But on top of that, a few days later was 9-11. And so um, not only was, you know, like it was just a hardship to have your business burned down, but then to also for our country to go through that. It was just economically, it was a really hard time. And a lot of businesses weren't thinking about, you know, ordering it. And, and so it was just a hard time to start back up. And I really got discouraged. I thought, we've worked 10 years at this business, and now it's gone. It's burned down. And um, I, I didn't know if we could do it again. And my husband took a totally different approach, and he just thought, OK, this is like starting all over again. This is like knowing the mistakes you've made and the extra inventory you have and all the things that you wish you didn't have were gone. And now you could just start fresh and you could just start and work on the things that you know are successful. And at that, at that moment, it was scrapbooking. And so we just dove right back in and within a few short months, we were up and running. And, um, and that year, we ended up um, doubling what our sales were from the previous year. And so we definitely, you know, didn't, didn't let it discourage us and let it, you know, um, keep us from, from moving forward with it. Um, in, the, in the scrapbooking industry, the flowers were very popular, but then we also started to research it and see what was out there. And I gotta make sure I don't take too much time. And with the scrapbooking industry, we saw that there were um, letters, you know, a lot of letters, a lot of different kinds, and there were a lot of different ways to, like sticky dots and things to put them on, but there were no letters that had the adhesive on it. So we created, a, a, it was called Chip Chatter, and I was going to bring some I forgot. Um, we created Chip Chatter, and, um, and then we did, did created a metal line of little words and, and letters that were, anyway, we, we created several lines in scrapbooking, and um, I feel like we were very innovative to the market because we just took what was doing good but made it a little bit better. And so we started to do this, and we ended up getting into Michael's um, with all our products. And, um, and we grew very, very quickly, and um, it was doing really well. And then we were approached at one of these scrapbooking shows um, to sell our business, something that we had really never thought about. And it was exciting because, you know, that's, I think most people, like, start a business because they want to grow it and they want to sell it. And, but we hadn't really thought about it. We just thought this was going to be our livelihood and, and um, had never thought much about selling it. But it was exciting. And all of a sudden, we had all these companies coming to us wanting to buy this little company in Richfield, Utah. And one of them was Fiskars. If you've ever heard of the scissors, um, um, that was probably the biggest company that um, approached us that wanted to buy us. And we flew out and met with them. And um, we ended up, um, in the long run, when we, we did sell our company, we went with a company from um, the company. It was a capital investment company out of San Francisco. And they had bought a company in Provo called Die Cuts with a View. And they were wanting to buy a smaller company and um, we were the smaller company because Die Cuts with a View was at that time was doing 25 million in just scrapbooking products, and we were at that time only doing probably about 2.5 million, and we were doing maybe three fourths in scrapbooking and some in gift and home, and so um, so we were much smaller than them. But after being you know um, acquired by this this investment company, they told Chet and I that probably the main reason they, uh, that, that they wanted our business, along with this huge you know, company in Provo, was because they'd, they loved the fact that we were diversified. So as you, you know, think about you know, creating a business, um, you know, keep in mind, you know, when you, and it might be a great success, you remember you know, to always, you know, I think, to keep in mind you know, things that you could diversify into, because the market's going to change. It's ever changing. I've seen it over the last 25 years change so many times. And so I feel like that's been something that we've been really good at, um, you know, adapting to the changes in the economy and, um, and adjusting what businesses we were, you know, doing. But anyway, so we, um, we sold our company and we worked with them for four years. 
And it was exciting because we would come up with ideas, but Chad and I were like a two-man team. Even though we had about 20 employees, we felt like the main things we always did ourselves. And, and from accounting to design, to, I mean, everything. We, we wore a lot of hats in our business because when you have a small business, you have to. I mean, there's no way it will survive unless you wear a lot of hats and make it work. And so um, Chad even jokes about how he, you know, he tells all these things that he did and he throws in there and I even ordered the toilet paper. Because literally when you own your own business, you do everything. And so um, we were doing everything and then all of a sudden we were acquired by a company that had an accountant. They had a sales team. They had a team that went out and did the trade shows. I mean, all of a sudden it was like, this is great. This is, this is wonderful. All I had to think about was designing products. And so it, it was very exciting. and. It was very exciting to see, um, to have a product development meeting, come up with an idea, and see them take it and run with it. And you know, I'd go up to Provo once a week. You know, we would meet with them, and within a matter of a few months, that product would be in Target, in Bed Bath and Beyond, in Michaels, in Kohl's. I mean, it just immediately, um, immediately took off, and it was really exciting. And one of the things that I feel like Chet and I were like the most valuable to die cuts was that. Um, as I said, we kind of like, I pride ourselves in being um, good at looking at something that's successful and, and making it better. And, and I had gone to a um, home party of vinyl. Do you guys know the vinyl lettering that you rub on the wall? And people have quotes in their homes and different places, and there might even be some. There's just, there's a lot of it out there. Not as much as it used to be, but I'd gone to a home party, and I'm sitting here watching my friends and neighbors order these quotes, you know, always kiss me good night or whatever, that they would rub on their wall for $50, $60. And I left that night and I went home and I talked to Chet and I just said, I just, I got to think that you could come up and just mass produce this. Um, we had a lot of factories in China and plus we had a lot of, you know, capabilities in Richfield. And we started thinking about packaging because that's one thing we've noticed in all our business dealings. If we packaged it great or if we displayed it great, it sold 10 times better. And if we went to a show and just had these sitting on a table, they wouldn't sell. But when you take them and you put them in a cute pot and you, you make this presentation, you would sell it. And then you also sell a bundle. So instead of someone coming in and saying, oh, I want 10 of these at $1.50, you know, they would say, OK, I want this whole display for $200. So you would have an immediate $200 sale instead of this. So we felt, we prided ourselves that we were really good at packaging and, and displaying things. And so we came up with this idea of putting the vinyl in a tube, you know, because the quote could be 10 feet long, but you could just wrap it up and put it in this. And, um, and it had, you know, it tells you how to, to apply it. Well, Die Cuts with a View, the company that bought us, um, did the first year that we came out with this, and they were excited. They launched it immediately. And the first year they did over 10 million in sales in vinyl quotes. The next year, they did 25 million in sales, one product. I mean, there was probably 200 quotes to choose from, but 25 million dollars in um, just vinyl quotes. And so it was exciting because they had always been scrapbooking, and now all of a sudden, I feel like with the help of Chet and I, they, we were getting them into home decor and coming up with framed pieces and vinyl. And it was very exciting to see that happen and see it on the shelves of all the major um, um, retailers out there. So that was, that was exciting and that was really fun. But after four years of work, working with die cuts, we decided we wanted to do our own thing again. And that's really, you know, when you say an entrepreneur, you really, you have it in you to just, you just want to be in control of your own destiny. And that's what we wanted to get back to. So we, excuse me. So we, um, how much time have I taken? So we, <laughs> I want to leave plenty of room for my daughter because she's the one that's amazing. So anyway, so we um, um, gave our, two, our notice and we had to wait two years. We had a non-compete clause. Whenever you sell to a company, they're going to make you sign something that you can't start back up and knock them off. So we had a two-year non-compete and so we um, decided we wanted to get that started. And, um, and we waited for the two years to get up and... Um, we started up a company. We dabbled in the flowers again because die cuts had no desire to do the flowers. I mean, the flowers were about a half a million dollar a year um, sell, and they didn't even want to waste it. At this point, when we left die cuts, they were up to $60 million in sales. And to them, the flowers were boring. They didn't want to mess with them. 
Um, they didn't want to import them from China. And so when we left and we had a two-year non-compete, they said, take your flower stuff. You can do it. We don't want it. And so to us, that was a great blessing because we had to wait two years to start up again. And so we dabbled in the flowers and got that going again. And, um, and then about five years ago, um, our daughters, Lindy that's here and um, her sister Mikey, um, created a magnet board that they would wrap a fabric around it. And then they had these silhouette magnets. And it was, the company was called Mikey Lens. And they started this business, and um, quickly they realized how hard a business was <laughs> at a young age. One of them was um, starting her family. She was eight months pregnant, and Lindy was in the middle of wedding plans. And they just quickly grew old of coming to Richfield every weekend and working hard. And they're hard workers, but you know, when you're that age, your weekends are really valuable. And they got tired of doing it really quick, and they decided that they didn't want to do this anymore. And I think that with Chet and I, we, you know, our two years had been up. We were ready to, to get back into something, and we saw that this is a great idea. I mean, being in the industry, you notice that if you can find something that looks great, but it's also functional, you'll sell 10 times as much. Because in people's minds, they want to justify why they bought something. And so if it's functional, um, they kind of justify it. So, so we felt like the magnet board was a great um, product to start with, but we felt like the work that they were doing was really hard. I mean, it was a lot of steps and wrapping the fabric. So we came up with canvas, printing on the canvas, you know, and then you just glue it down. Anyway, it was a much easier process than what they were doing. And um, we tweaked it a little bit, and we started um, selling magnet boards. And it was amazing, you know, the reorders. I mean, the, the mom and pop shops loved them. They were selling them good, and so we, we felt like we had a winner, and so we just dove right in, and we purchased a 20,000 square foot building and, um, and started producing magnet boards. And um, so I'm just trying to get kind of getting out of order here. But anyway, we just um, were really lucky. Two years ago, um, we were Oprah's top 50 list, her Christmas list, which was a big deal for us. Um, I think we even have, I don't know, we have a picture on here of, Maybe we don't. I'll just scroll down through some of our pictures here. But we, um, there's the donut. That's her doings, donut queen. Anyway, so we um, um, were in Oprah's, and that, that helped. Anything with social media um, has been beneficial. We've tried to learn from our children. Our children are brilliant. I mean, now it's so much easier to start a company and get to the next level. I look at what the first 10 years, how long it took us to get to a million in sales, and then after that, each, each section of our lives, every time we've started a new business, it's been so much easier. Thank, you know, I think primarily because of the internet and now because of social media. Um, I know I've probably um, left out a lot of things and Chet's gonna tell me afterwards everything I left out. But um, I, um, I feel like probably well, I look at my own children, and I look at what the, maybe the obstacles that they feel like they have in starting a business, and I think you doubt yourself. And that's why I feel like this meeting, um, what's it, launch? Launch Meetup. Launch Meetup is a great opportunity for you because um, to just get some you know, feedback from something and not doubt yourself, because I think a lot of times we always doubt ourselves that we have a good idea. And so I think you know, don't hesitate to... Um, to try to pursue it, and I and I think my my daughter will share with you how easy it was for her, and how little the money, a bit of, you know, money with social media and the internet, how easy it is to start up a business now. It's a lot different than it used to be, and so um, don't 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 ever hesitate to um, to do things that you know that you feel like um, could be a success. I um I want to just close by just talking a little bit about my own children because they're all probably pretty close to your age. Um, Four of my children um, have started their own businesses right now. And my 20-year-old um, that's going to school in Provo, he um, just got home from a mission four months ago, and he started up a business last month. And it's a Thai subscription. And, um, and I'm hoping it goes as well as Lindy's subscription, because it's been awesome. I also have um, my 23-year-old 23, 23 daughter started up. Well, she didn't start up. Lindy started up a company that, she, that my other daughter is now running called LDS Art Co. that sells temple pictures and um, religious art. And then my other daughter, I have lots of, lots of children, started um, a company called Ella and Anne, which is temple dresses. 
And then there's Lindy. That's like started like three, four different businesses and been a success at all of them, um, especially her last one, Little Poppy Co., um, which has done amazing. And so I'm really proud of my children. I, I, I look and I think, you know, I sometimes worry about them because they've gone into business and I know it's a hard life because we've worked really hard. My husband and I have worked really hard over the last 25 years. But it really is a great blessing to be able to own your own business. It's, it's exciting. It's exciting to come up with an idea and to, um, and to see it to grow and develop. And so I am, um, sorry, I'm just trying to think of what else. So I just, I, I just want all of you to know that anything's possible and that um, each one of you can do that. I want Lindy to know that I am so thankful for her to come down and share this time with me. And um, she's a mother of twins, three-year-old twins, and she has done an amazing job as a stay-at-home mom and now this great business lady. And I want to turn the time over to her. And they're saying time. So anyway, but thank you. Hi guys, I'm Lindy, and I told my mom she could do this all by herself because she likes to talk, so she gave me a few minutes. So I just want to um, quickly tell you about my story and um, businesses I've started. Um, as you heard, I graduated in biology, so it's kind of weird that I'm here today um, running, um, running businesses, but the mistake I made was I thought I wanted to go into the medical field, and I spent four years going to biology and pushing through as fast as I could and, and I never stopped once to get a job in the medical field and to see do I like the medical field and so as soon as I graduated I realized I hated the medical field and um, I wasted all this time and so um, my advice would be to get to go to work get a job whether you need money or you don't need money I feel like getting a job um, whether it's um, and, you know, any place. And so for my first job after graduating was Hollister. So I was a manager there for a little while, and um, I learned there that I loved numbers. And I, they had a brand, and I learned that um, they took, they, they used their brand to sell everything. Um, and that's what kind of these new, like, that's what social media is. That's what um, people do now. They use their brand to sell their products, and I was really impressed. So after that, I got a job as a secretary at a manufacturing company. And there, I, um, I got saw a little bit about, you know, all how the business worked, and I learned a ton. And I saw an opportunity to take their products and sell them online. Um, and um, I never started a business before, but I, I, I could see that other people were doing it, and they were successful at it. And so I said, you know, I'm just going to do this. And I didn't know how to create a website. So I, um, the same job, I had a friend who has, whose husband made websites, and I said, you know, can you make me a, a website, you know, a cheap website? And so he did that for me, and um, after a couple months in, I learned, you know, I can create my own website. And once I knew I could create my own website, you know, I could do anything. I could start, you know, a bunch of other businesses. And um, so I think that, you know, from, from, with, from my experience, every job I've had has opened up an opportunity or showing me something that I, I'm good at, or I'm, uh, something I hate, something I know I never want to do again. And so I feel like um, I wish I would have done that sooner. I wish I would have got jobs sooner and, and seen what I liked and figured that out um, before I spent four years in, um, in biology. And um, so for me, how my brain works with business is I, I'm not the type of person that can invent something that's never been out there before. I um, I'm kind of like what my mom said. I, um, I look at another product and I think, you know, why are they successful? You know, is it their packaging? Is it their brand? Is it their product? Um, you know, how could I make it better? How could I change it up? And so with everything I've done, it's been an ordinary product and I've just made it a little bit different and it's made, it's made me unique. So, for example, the magnet boards. We, we sold a magnet board that didn't look like a magnet board and that is what made us unique and that's why they have been so successful with it. And with my online website, um, I was competing with other people. So, you know, I'm like, okay, I need to make mine look better. I need to make mine more user-friendly. I need to offer free shipping. You know, I need to do it so that there's a reason why they want to come to my website and not their website. And then um, last is my Bose subscription. That's what I, um, I do full-time now. 
and um, it's bows. I mean, hair accessories has, has been around forever, and I just figured out a way to deliver it to the customer differently than they were getting it before, and it worked, and it, it made our company unique. And so I'm not saying to go out and copy another company, but look for those opportunities. Look for things that, you know, something that's in, you're interested in and see how you can change it to make it your company. And, you know, if someone's selling um, Christmas trees that are just a green Christmas tree, and you know people are buying that, so people are looking for their Christmas tree. If you create a gold one that's cuter or better or it sings or whatever it is, people are searching for a Christmas tree. If they can see both and yours is better, then they're going to go to you. And that's another reason I like taking products that people are already wanting, they're already searching for, because you're, you get people needing them right away, and if yours is better, then it's good. So, um, Little Poppy Co. is um, what I um, spend my time with. It's been, I'm doing full-time now. Um, I co-own it with my sister-in-law, and so I had the idea for Little Poppy Co. Um, I was a new mom, and I hated buying bows. I thought it was frustrating, I, um, they were expensive, and then you lose them really quick. So I, um, one day, I think like, I lost a bow walking from my house to my car, and I thought, holy cow, like, I need bows sent to my house every month. And I'm like, oh my gosh, a bow subscription. So I, I went home, looked online, there was nothing out there, and I thought, okay, I'm gonna do this. And um, I, didn't, I didn't know how to make a bow, I never made a bow in my life, but I was like, I'll figure that out later. Um, so I spent about a month and a half um, creating my website. Um, I, once I launched, I, I could tell it was going to be successful. I, my first bows, I glued them together. I didn't know how to sew, so I just glued everything together. And um, then my sister-in-law is, is a sewer, so I'm like, you gotta come, you got to come help me and do this with me. Um, so we started out with Instagram. That's how we got our first subscriber. I think that's how we get the majority of our subscribers today. And, um, so what we would do, I'm sure like a lot of you are familiar with this, with this, but we would just go and follow our competitors' followers. So um, I'm sure you guys have had it happen a lot where someone's following you and you don't know who it is. So you click over and you see who it is. Do I know them? Yes, I want to follow them. No, I don't want to follow them. So it was, it was free marketing for us. They'd click over, they'd see a little poppy code, they'd see you know, our both subscription, they'd see our price, and they would see our pictures. And so they would decide right then, yeah, I want to follow them, or yeah, I want to subscribe today. And that's how, that's how we grew. And um, like I've been to a million Instagram classes and they never would tell you to go and follow and unfollow people. But I think that it's not, they say like that's not organic. Well, I say, well, let's just hustle because I'd rather hustle and get there faster than be organic and take like twice as long. So that is, that is how we grew. Um, I'm just gonna quickly finish so I can have you guys ask, ask some questions. So we started out making the bows ourselves. Um, then we went to local, you know, moms that were helping us out, and that was that was really hard to manage. So we started looking for a manufacturer, and um, I started emailing everyone I know. You know, someone helped me find a manufacturer for what we need, and someone said, "Have you looked into the Gunnison Prison?" And um, I'm like, "What?" So the Gunnison Prison has a sewing facility that um, they make lots of products. So. I called like a million people to get to the right person. We set up a meeting. We were able to go down and tour the facility. And now all our bows are manufactured at the Gunnison Prison. <laughs> so it's like so interesting. And it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful program that I'm so happy that we're a part of because I feel like it's so important that these people are getting a second chance and they're able to earn money to send home to their families and to use for when they get out. So I feel like it's an awesome program. But, um, We've, we've started out growing that model even too, just because we've grown so quickly. And with a subscription business, you can't, it's not like one month you can take a break or you can go less. You know, every month we have more subscribers and we're having to produce more um, products. So we are starting to look into importing and how that will work. Because um, we know we're gonna have to go there eventually. Um, um, so I'm just trying to see. Okay, so I mean now we're, we have six employees, we're in office space. Like, like you heard, we almost have 10,000 subscribers, which has been huge for us. And the last little thing is when I don't know something, um, so say I don't know how to run a Facebook ad, or say I don't know where it's, what's the best way to ship my product, I Google it. And I, I, don't, I read 15 to 20 articles, and I see what everyone else is doing, and I see what their plan was, and then I adjust it, and I, I, I put it into my business. And so 
it's my way of learning and I feel like everyone can do that. If you don't know how to start a business or you don't know how to get a, a business license or you don't know how to do anything, just Google it because um, you, you can learn so much from Google, it's crazy. Um, so I guess we're getting short on time. So I don't know if you guys have any questions, let's open it up to questions. If not, I can just keep talking. Um, you can ask me or my mom or you can ask both of us, um, either way. Anyone have any questions? No? Okay. So, um, I think that, I can't imagine how my mom started her business, I guess, because how did anyone start a business? Yes. So the bows are made at the Gunnison Prison, and then where are they packaged and shipped out from? So, yes. Uh, yes, yeah, so it's awesome because there's a, a prison in Draper where I live. So they have a, a bus that goes back and forth weekly. So they would transfer all of them up to the Draper prison and we'd pick them up. And then we package and ship them all from our office. So we send everyone three bows um, every month. Um, and so, yeah. Is that? And where do you get like, the packaging? I assume you have really nice like, boxes of packaging. Yeah, so. So we actually send them in little pink mailers. That's kind of like our we it's kind of our brand. It's oh I don't have them packaged, but um, we put them in a little pink package. That's kind of cute. Um, so people like distinguish us by getting a little pink package in the mail every month. Um, um, but how I found the pink package is I started with something that was more expensive, and then I. I don't know if you guys can hear me. Um, it, was, it was more expensive, and we've just, as we've gone, we've gotten, we've found better packaging that's cheaper, and it's, it, again, it's just me Googling pink packages. And now, um, right now, we're having our packages made with our logos on it. Um, that will be like a, more of our branding. Um, so I feel like when you start out, I mean, when I started out, I just, I just shoved the bows in a, in a mailer. And I just sent them to people. There wasn't a thank you card. They're, they weren't on a nice card because I didn't, I didn't know how to do that yet. And so I just would put it in a package and say, see you later. So now we've come a long way, as you can see. And so I feel like you just start. You just start somewhere. My website wasn't as good as it is now the day I started. And I didn't know as much as I did now the day I started. But you learn. Um, there, it's just, there's so many different things. Like I... I know I hated making magnet boards. Like my mom said, like I, I couldn't get away fast enough because it was so much work and I, I knew I didn't want to make magnet boards the rest of my life. So I, had to, I found that my niche was online. I loved being online. I loved um, my other two businesses. I don't actually touch the product. Um, it goes from the manufacturer straight to the customer. I'm just the middleman. And so I find that the businesses that I'm better at and I like are the ones that um, um, aren't as labor intensive as building a magnet board. So, any other questions? I think I saw a hand. Yeah? Yeah, so with every business I've started, I haven't really actually had to put up a lot of money. So I think I put in about $400 to get Little Poppy Go started, and that's kind of how you kind of fake it. So I like went out and bought some bows, and I said like, oh, these are my last month bows, when I really had never made them before, and I just kind of created like little samples. And then you take orders um, for them, and then you ship at the end of the month. So you can kind of get by. You know, I, I took orders, and I said, okay, I think I'm going to have about this many. Maybe I'll get five, ten more. I'm going to order my supplies. So that was... That's unique to subscriptions a little bit because sometimes you have to have a lot of capital. But I, with my businesses, I didn't. I, I found ways that were a little bit less, a little more risk-free. My other ones that are drop shipped to the customer, I get the money and then I get billed like a week later when it ships. So I'm never in a spot where I have to front money. Um, you know, so I, if you, okay, so if you, I don't even know how to tell you to get capital um, because I've never had to do that. So, anyone else have a question? Anyone else have a question for my mother? Oh, yes?
So you're asking what, I'm sorry, I haven't been repeating any of the questions and I was supposed to do that. So you're asking like what website to build a, your website through, kind of what platform? Yeah. Okay, so um, there's lots of different ones. And now like it's so easy, like Shopify. Like you can build your own website without having any knowledge on Shopify. Um, I feel like that's a really good one. I've used Big Commerce a lot. I think Shopify is better, but I had been using Big Commerce before, so I kind of stuck with that. Um, with um, Little Poppy Co, I wanted a website that was a platform that was specific to um, subscriptions. And I actually randomly found them by them advertising on my Facebook feed. And I clicked into it and I thought, oh, if I ever start a subscription, I'd want to use these guys. And so you just need to find the platform. If you are going to do a subscription, you'd want to use you know, something like CrateJoy. If you're just doing a regular product, it'd be you know, Shopify or BigCommerce. And they, they give you free trials. You can spend 30 days setting up your website um, before you, you, know, you just have to, have to start paying. And it usually is pretty minimal, like a $30 or $40 a month fee. Um, but those are some websites I would recommend um, to like, get going. Does that answer your question? OK. Anyone else have? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think you guys were able to save a computer, right? So they ended up running, the firemen got a computer out. So they were able to get um, all their information was still stored on the drive. But um, they had to call everyone and explain to them, like, your order that would, would be going out now is not going to be going out for a few months. So luckily they were able to get a computer because if they didn't have any record of who owed the money or what orders they had, I think they would be in a, in a bad spot. But luckily they, they got a computer. And that's how they were able to resume. Anyone else? So if you guys want to start a business, I would say just go for it. Um, I think like when I thought of Little Poppy Go a Bow subscription, I, I talked about it in my head for like three months before I just pulled the trigger and went. And I wish I would have just done it sooner. And I, I think that, I think that you guys probably have a lot of good ideas, and you should you should test it out, make samples, get you know, start at Instagram, get feedback, see what people like and don't like, and um, just kind of start somewhere. Yeah. Any other questions? We good? Yeah. Do you have any? Um, so we're, yeah, so we're always trying to improve. We do have like an exclusive shop that um, once you're a subscriber, you have access to and we kind of make it like an exclusive thing where they, they feel like they're getting, you know, get a part of something exclusive. And um, in there we do like add-on bows. So it's a way to upsell the customer. But we're working on trying to add in um, clothing and shoes and other products that um, we're getting directly from someone else. Um, so we're not having to make it, but it's another way that we can um, increase sales and you know do that. <coughs> Anyone else? Well, you guys, thanks for having me. <laughs> so we want to thank Lenita.